the Battle of Britain is over. The Luftwaffe has been driven to exhaustion, and Hitler suffers his first major defeat. He dithers, considers various options, and finally turns his eyes toward Russia, the place he singled out in Mein Kampf for Lebensraum, Germany's living space. Hitler will break Germany's treaty with the Soviet Union and invade that vast country. The campaign is called Barbarossa. It is June 22, 1941. A train from the east chugs across the Bug River, bringing Germany oil and corn from the Soviet Union. One hour later, 6,000 guns fire. The invasion of Russia has begun. History says it was a huge mistake. What was it? From the point of view of Hitler at that time, the, the time that he made the decision, it, it was the only thing he could do. He, he needed territory by his thinking. He needed Lebensraum. The place that he had always said he was going to get it was in the Soviet Union. The battle plan developed at Hitler's order calls for three army groups. The northern group will seize Leningrad. The center group, which is given the most armor, will drive to Smolensk on the road to Moscow. The southern group will push through the Ukraine to Kiev and the Crimea. The armies smash eastward at a high rate of speed, though there are no reliable maps and few roads, almost none of them paved. In the first day, they destroy 1,000 Soviet airplanes. Within a week, they defeat five Soviet armies. In the grain-rich Russian Ukraine, the German troops are greeted by peasants with flowers and food and treated as liberators. Hatred of the Soviets runs deep here. Millions of Ukrainians have been murdered and starved to death by the Soviet government. The Ukrainians want to dissolve the farm collectives, reopen their churches, and have the right to own their own land. Instead, SS death squads arrive and begin killing Jews and communists and anyone else who commits even the smallest infractions of German orders. The peasants' grain is shipped back to Germany, leaving them to starve. The angry peasants form partisan groups. When they are caught, they are hanged. Viewed from a military perspective, the German rape of the Ukraine is a terrible mistake, but not to Hitler. Exterminating the Slavs is what he had always planned to do. Some historians believe this is the place where Hitler lost the war. The long-delayed drive toward Moscow begins. Guderian's tank columns cover 150 miles in an amazing four days. There is little doubt the drive will succeed. Russian women and old men begin digging deep tank traps outside Moscow. Then it begins to rain. And the Germans, who are accustomed to paved roads, experience something new, Russian mud. If you have not seen it, and have you, if you don't have been in the mud, in the Russian mud, you cannot imagine what it means. But I can give you an example. Perhaps. Uh, so we were stopped, and all the divisions were uh, in a rather very long line. So our first tank in Kalinin, and the last vehicle of my division, one single division, 300 kilometers back in the mud, because it couldn't go on. Finally, it turns cold, and the tanks are able to move again. And then it turns unbelievably cold. The Germans, who had planned to win in one season, are still in their summer uniforms. And the cold was horrible. We were stationed 35 kilometers west of Moscow in Klin. And uh, one night, temperature dropped down to 55 degrees centigrade below zero and wind was blowing. There was no way to move. There was no way to get your aircraft started or fire a gun. The Russians were flying. And the Russians were attacking. The uh, one side of the airfield in Klein was the German front, the other side was the Russian front. When you took off, 
you are under fire. The snow was about two feet high. And uh, we always wondered, on oh, takeoff, you were rumbling over obstacles. You won't believe it or not, it were dead bodies of Russians frozen into the ground. Hitler finally acknowledges the need for warm clothes and collects them from German civilians to airdrop at the front. You could see at that time German soldiers wearing mink coats, ladies, and a steel helmet and a subgun over the shoulder. Hitler refuses to believe that things are as bad as his generals say, but they are. On the 5th of December, we had to give to our corps a message which, at least <laughs> in, in my divisions, never had been given during all the war. We are no further able to attack. This is the end. And uh, this was the fifth. And, and the morning of the sixth began the counterattack of the Russians, all over the front, not only against us, with new troops, a main part Siberian troops, and to give you another examples, what the Russians can do, part of these divisions came from Siberia by foot, marching. They left their spots uh, at the beginning of August. They arrived on the 5th of December and attacked on the 6th of December. August, September, uh, October, November, four months. One day in between, and attack and win. The Russians have proven to be a far different enemy than Hitler or anyone, including the Allies, expected. Their tank, the T-34, is better than the German tanks. Their white-clad ski troops are a surprise. And most surprising of all is the way they use their manpower. Kielmanseg remembers how the Russians cleared minefields. They drove uh, uh, cows through the mines. And then the mine here went up, here went up, the cow went up, and then the, the, the way was clear. OK, cows. And then what I'm speaking of is they did it with men, with soldiers. And soldiers in line, arm in arm, behind machine guns, and then the shoulders were blown up. Finally, Hitler relents. Galland, after all, is a national hero with 104 combat victories. He allows the general to form a single squadron of jet fighters. But by ordering to give the proof that the 262 was an excellent interceptor, I'm sure he had the thoughts, this is better than let him suicide. And the chance to be killed in the last missions the last 10 missions was very high. But we didn't pay much attention for it. In, th in these conditions and in this time, to be killed was nothing for us. Most of the pilots 12 were colonels and majors, highly decorated. A squad of experts. And we decided we have now the responsibility to try to avoid as all of our cities are destroyed. They're going to fight to the very end, having the good feeling we have done something without being a leader in, within the framework of our responsibility as soldiers. And in uh, April 45, on the 18th, I made a very short flight because my plane caught fire during takeoff and crashed. The plane exploded, and for me, the war was over. Steinhoff, once called the handsomest man in the Luftwaffe, is horribly burned. Later, he will have 70 operations on his face. One week after Steinhoff's crash, Galland is hit from above while shooting down two bombers and makes a crash landing on his airfield as it is being bombed. 
What would have happened if Hitler had allowed the 262 to be used in numbers when it was first available? If we would have used the Messerschmitt 262 in fighter operation, let's say only 100 of these 1400 which have been built, I'm certain that we would have destroyed at least 200 in each day. This means the 262 could have made the first wave of attacks and they would have broken the formation. And then our fighters, our prop fighters, could do the rest. The day rates would have been stopped very soon. Who was Adolf Hitler? A half century later, we ask the question again. He was uh, like a meteor. He struck and was uh, there for a thousand years, which turned out to be 10 or 12 and disappeared, taking with him uh, the German nation, as it was known before. Oh, God. Oh. To me, and not only to me, he was a genius, but only of the evil. And that's what the point the Germans did not know before years he was in power. What he said about himself very often was he was a man who came from nowhere. He was also a man who disappeared into nowhere. One German general called Hitler a solitary creature who followed a solitary path with only his gigantic plans for company. <laughs> 